Joining me now with more on this is infectious disease expert, Dr. Neil Rao. Dr. Rao, should we be concerned about the rising number of deaths associated with this coronavirus? I don't think so. And I know that's going to sound really strange for me to say that. In fact, this is a real deja vu to what happened during SARS, the way we kept counting new cases every day, and we kept counting new deaths every day they were found. Just because the numbers are going up does not mean that things are getting out of control. What's actually happening is that people are looking harder and they are finding new cases the more they know about it. So there's something called an ascertainment bias. You know, look and ye shall find. Another thing that's happening is that we're not looking at the number of new cases that's happening each day. We're looking at the cumulative tally. The longer you observe a disease, the more deaths you're going to have, the more cases you're going to find. What you really want to know is, is the number of new cases a day going up or is it starting to go down? And that is a better indicator of what's really happening with, the, with an outbreak, so to speak. Um, another thing we need to watch is how many cases are being found outside Wuhan and how many of the cases that are found have no link at all to Wuhan. So far, almost every, every single case has had some kind of link. The person had been there, uh, not necessarily to an animal market, but there's still a kind of a connectivity with Wuhan. If we end up with cases that have no connection, then we're getting into more widespread human-to-human -human transmission, which might be more of a concern. So you mentioned SARS. Yes. What are the similarities between the coronavirus, what we know of it so far, and SARS? We're looking at the exact same family of viruses as SARS. So in many ways, we can take a lot of the lessons of SARS and reapply them here in terms of how to prepare ourselves and prevent some of the problems that happened during SARS. One other parallel with SARS that we're hearing about here is that healthcare workers have been infected and also household members have been infected. That's exactly what happened with SARS. Many people think SARS was a community-based outbreak. It really wasn't. It was mainly a hospital outbreak and an outbreak associated with contact with the sickest patients. So if you're a household member of somebody who's getting increasingly sick and they happen to have this virus, then you might contract this. And likewise, if you're a healthcare worker taking care of someone like who's really quite sick, you're dealing with a more contagious form of the disease when a person is more sick and therefore you're more at risk of getting it. What are some of the ways that Canada can limit the transmission of the coronavirus? Can we rely on people to self-report? Look, you, you can't run a police state. You have to ha assume people are going to be honest in terms of answering questions. I think when people are really sick, they generally do tell the truth more often than not. It's in their interest to tell the truth after all. If they seek medical attention, they want people to have all the best information possible if they can recall it. Um, so no system is foolproof. The other thing is that we have learned a ton from SARS. We've had inquiries galore. We've had structural changes in how we deal with infectious diseases, how we deal with people with fever and respiratory illnesses. We even do things out of flu season in this country, especially in this province, that are probably not even needed outside being prepared for something like this when we can turn it back on. Um, we also won't repeat some of the mistakes of SARS which is not screening people when they come in with a fever and a respiratory illness. Like, let's not forget that during SARS, we didn't know what we were dealing with. We used mm -hmm. to call it a mystery illness for the first yeah. two months. That's deja vu. This time, we actually know what the gene sequence is, and we already have instructions from the WHO and CDC how to test people and how we should be collecting specimens, and we have public health labs that are ready to ramp up if needed. So it's a very different scenario here. I'm not worried. You're not worried. Okay. Dr. Neil Rao, good to see you. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me again.